Okay, I'm back. I don't know what's going on with Facebook tonight. I tried to switch the screen so you guys can see things properly. And it keeps going green on me. So we won't be doing that. And hopefully my messages show up. Okay, well, we're making the best of this. Um, serious Facebook issues. So, tonight I am working on some blocks that I'm going to be doing some chalking on after. And I'm just going to show you quickly what I've already done with these. So, these are just 4x4 four four squares. And they're actually like 3.5 is what a 4x4 four four actually measures out to. And so, I cut it 3.5 the other way so that they turned out into perfect squares. Then, I have gone and I have painted them. And I am using the Wise Owl Chalk Synthesis Paint. And I'm looking for my can opener. So I'm using limestone. It's just this beautiful gray. It's kind of like a dingy white, which is exactly what I'm going for. Because I want it to look old and rustic. And so quickly, I've already painted all the sides except for this one square that I've left. Just to show you quickly how I do it. So I like to use the Klingon brushes. If any of you have tried Klingon, it would be awesome if you put that in the comments. If you haven't and you do any kind of chalk painting, these things are amazing. They like to be used wet or damp at least, which gives you a really nice smooth coat. And of course the Wise Owl paint is amazing for doing that as well. And one coat is really good enough, just like that. Now, the brushes like to be, if you're into using the Klingon brushes, um, they like to be used damp. They work really well damp. Um, what I'm going to do with this, right now I don't have my jar next to me, but I'm just going to suspend it in water. And the paint in this is actually just going to fuse right away from it. They are an awesome paintbrush. If you ever get the chance, you'll want to use those. If you're ever looking for one, I can tell you who to get them from. So just drop a message in there if you're looking for the paintbrush and I will get back to you on that. Yours goes green every time too. I don't understand that. It doesn't usually do that to me. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna let that one dry and I'm just gonna show you quickly. There's one side on here that I haven't done yet. Which side was it? Oh, that side right there. Okay, then I'm gonna go through and wax them. So I've painted it one coat. Hi Debbie, hi Leanne, hi Tasha. Um, I've gone and po pointed, painted one coat with the Wise Owl chalk paint. And then I'm going in, and this is a Wise Owl salve. And it's like a wax, but it's so much thinner. It's like a butter. It is amazing. And I like to wet sand. So what that means is I apply the salve which by the way, smells so good. My favorite one, this is Noir Moon. It's kind of like a masculine aftershave, but still kind of sweet like a dessert. It's awesome. And the other favorite of mine is Lemon Verbena. Also comes in white tea and I don't know, they've got so many now that, and I don't sell it anymore, so I can't really tell you everything. Ooh, message you about the brushes. I definitely will. Then, while it's still damp, because waxes and salves actually take a while to cure, um, but we can go ahead and do everything on it. It's just it's not fully cured to give you that rock solid coating. Actually, it takes about a month. You can go ahead and use them in the meanwhile, but they're not like for heavy duty use. Like if you were doing a tabletop or something like that, you'd want to wait the full month. Anyways, while it's still damp, I'm going to go in with my favorite sandpaper which is the 3M sandpaper. It comes in different grades. This is a 150. And I'll tell you why I love this. I wash them. Normal sandpaper, I would go through like crazy when I was furniture painting. This one is a washable. So while it's still damp, I just go in and I give it a light sanding. And then you can see that it kind of cakes up on there. Afterwards, when this is totally caked up, I'll take this, I'll soak it in the sink. I use Dawn dish soap, just because it works well. Sunlight might work too, I don't know, whatever your grade is, but I love Dawn. 
Um, I'll put some Dawn dish soap in the sink with it and I'll take an old toothbrush and that will wash right off and I can get use after use after use after use after use on this. So if you're looking for good sandpapers, 3M's. The other great thing about 3M sandpaper, I don't make any money off this. I'm just sharing what I love, um, is that it's so flexible. So if you're doing rungs on chairs and stuff, it's not going to crinkle and give you those harsh corners that leave steep scratches. This is amazing. Ooh, Leanne, I will tell you where to get salve from. I will message you on that, sweetie. I might actually have still one or two, but if not, I've got a gal that will hook you up. All right. Okay, carrying on. So that's been wet sanded. This one's still oop, drying, still tacky. But while that's drying, we're going to move on to the other ones. So what I'm doing tonight is I am going to take the transfer or part of the transfer home. And it's from home is where your honey is transfer. And I'm going to show you over the next week or so how we can take the three transfers from the Bees Knees collection. I think there's three. And I'm going to interchange them and we can use them in all different ways. So this is just showing you how to get the most out of your money. So when you're buying a transfer, I don't want you to think that it's a one-time use because these are reusable over and over and over again. So I want to show you as many different ways as possible that I would use these transfers. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the H from home. So I'm just going to apply it down there. Now, normally I would fuzz these. But because I've done the wet sanding with the salve, um, I don't need the layer of fuzz. Just because the wax is going to give me that protective coating in there anyways. And why I used wax or a salve or anything like that is because these are just, um, I don't know if they're a pine or a cedar, but they're a raw wood, right? So you just you need something on there because you don't want to pull up any of the paint and you don't want to pull up any of the fibers of the wood and get it stuck to your transfer and wreck your transfer we're trying to make our last transfers last forever because we love them i've already used this transfer i think twice and my daughter i think has used it twice for different things and i have a whole bunch of plans for this yes this is going to be awesome tasha you're going to see many many ways of using the transfers I'm going to go through the bees knees section and then I've got a whole nother series that I'm going to do after that. The point of this is to try and get our money's worth out of what we're buying. Not to mention like if you're doing your kitchen, like right now my kitchen's going to be done in all the, the bees. So I'm going to do tea towels. I'm going to do decorations. I'm going to do, you'll see tons of stuff. Okay. So I've centered it eyeballed it it's probably not perfect I've taken a little of the black paste and I'm just gonna squeegee over the H and I'm just scraping back any of the excess and putting it back in my jar because I am frugal so there's my H Next, I'm going to jump over to the M. I'm not going to do the O because I have plans. I am going to skip the O. And I'll show you that after. I think I like that side better. So again, I'm just going to apply it down. Make sure there's no air bubbles in my silk screen. I'm going to take a little of the black paste again. And I'm going to go over the M. And now when you're going over these, because I'm just using sections of this transfer, you don't need to cover the whole transfer. You just need to cover the silk screen area. By the way, that's the big difference about transfers from Chalk Couture as opposed to using your homemade crickets and silhouette machines or whatever. When you make those on a vinyl, first of all, you're usually only getting one use out of them. Second of all, where the hole is, I'm going to hold it this way because then you see it properly, even though this is a sticky side towards you. Um, where there's usually a hole, these have a silk screen, which gives you an amazing sharp lines and great detail. Next, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the E. 
and I'm just gonna put that on there. Now, if I was to put these outside after they were all done, um, I would want to give a clear coat of something because the amazing thing about the chalk paste is that it can wash off. And because I've put that layer of wax on there, it probably would wash off. I'm not guaranteeing it because sometimes the darker colors like the reds and the blacks like to stain, oh, and the red, um, like to stain. But on a chalk couture surface, other than, well, most of their surfaces, I shouldn't say all of them, because they're um, palette boards and trying to think what else, palette boards and box frames. They're not as reusable um, because they are raw wood that's just been painted, so they tend to stain. But some people get more uses out of it. You can always paint a different color over it and go back. And there's my E, and I do apologize for everything being backwards today. That's not my fault, that's Facebook. All right, so this side is, well, it's still a little tacky, but it's not bad. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wax it the best I can, just to keep things moving along. So, I'm using a palm brush. That's what I like to use for waxing, wax or salve. I have one that I use for dark colors, I have one that I use for light colors, and again, if you're looking for these, message me on palm brushes. I can tell you where to get those as well. These are amazing brush because they don't have that big, a lot of the thick brushes, they'll have a big piece of plastic in there. And after a while, your fibers all come away and separate or they shed. These things, I've had this one now um, probably three or four years. Use it all the time, at least once or twice a week, um, if not a lot more than that. And I don't lose any fibers from it. I might have lost one or two the first use, but I don't lose any fibers. It's a nice weight. It doesn't have a long handle, so I can hold it like this. If I'm working in something with details, I can really grind it in there. And it keeps its shape well. I do wash them about once a year, as long as I don't mix colors. I love that brush. So if you're interested in that brush, let me know. And I'm going to go in with the sandpaper. And again, I'm just going to... Give it a light sanding, which is a wet sanding. And like, there is no pushing down on it or anything like that. You're gonna see it's got a little bit of a dust that's a pasty dust. I'm just gonna take a rag after and just wipe off any of that pasty dust, just so it doesn't stick to our transfer. And again, after, when this piece is all gunked up, I will stick it in the sink and I will wash it with a toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap and my sandpaper will come clean. That's the amazing thing about the 3M. Alrighty. Pretty good, got a little bit of something that stuck there. Just give me my sandpaper. Just a little chunk there. Of something perfect all right so on this one instead of doing the O in home I'm gonna switch it up so I'm gonna take this transfer and stick it off to the side because I'm done with it and later on I will just lie that in the sink with some cold water scrub it down and it's gonna come like almost perfectly clean sometimes there's a little grayish left from the black or the red or whatever but yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So for this one, I am going to take the beautiful honeycomb and I'm just gonna put it on there pretty much any way you want. It comes close to covering the whole surface, but I'm not looking for a full coverage. This is supposed to be rustic and farmhousey, shabby chic, you know. So then I'm gonna go in with my bumblebee paste, which I have already stirred this one. I'm gonna take a little bit on my squeegee and I'm gonna apply it and then I'm just gonna scrape any of the excess back. Now remember, normally you would fuzz these things, but because I did the wet sanding with the wax or the salve, I don't have to. Just applying the paste. 
So I hope everybody's had a good day. We had beautiful weather this morning. And then quickly this afternoon, it clouded over. Which is okay. I guess we need that too, the rain and stuff, right? But that sun this morning was awesome. Just applying the paste, just covering the silk screen area. And again, just scraping it back, making sure there's no harsh lines left. Applying the excess back into the jar because I'm frugal and there's no point in wasting. And then I'm just gonna stick that aside and that will get washed off too. So, let's see what we got. Again, I apologize, everything is backwards to you guys. I'm just gonna swipe these words away just to see how we look. So, for the bee theme, we have, or for you guys, I, even if I switched it, the letters are still going to be backwards, so I can do this real quick, but you're going to see it in green. I do apologize. Ta-da! I don't know if you can see the honeycomb part now, which is right here, actually, but there we go. I don't know why Facebook's doing a green, so I apologize. So, that's one way to do it. My next way is I'm gonna take another side, and it might look cute with a honey pot. I know my daughter's gonna have fun with this, that every day she's gonna come down and switch the O around, right? So this is the cute honey pot. And it came with the, let me think which transfer it came with. It came with Home is Where Your Honey Is. And it's a cute, big jar. Now this one, I would like to take a tiny bit of the black paste. And I'm just going to do part of the jar with the black paste. And part of it with the yellow for the honey. Now, my black paste is the bottom of the bucket, so it's getting a little thick and chunky. Needs to add water again. I've been saying bottom of the bucket, though, since I don't know when, like Christmas maybe, that I kept saying, oh, running out, gonna have to open a new jar soon. And I haven't had to yet. I just keep adding a little more water, and I'm getting some serious mileage out of this jar. Then I'm gonna go in with the bumblebee yellow. And I'm just going to apply that on the bottom part. For those of you just jumping on, if you don't mind, just say hi and give me a hashtag live or a hashtag replay would be awesome. Also, I would love it if you would show your support and just hit that little S-H-A-R-E button. I just dragged it through a tiny bit of black, so I'm just going to wipe off that off my squeegee because I don't want to mix my colors. So if you could hit that S-H-A-R-E button, that would be amazing. And every once in a while for doing that, I do pick names and I will just send you a little thank you in the mail. You'll get a message from me first asking, you know, what's your mailing address and such. And then you just get a little note from me with a thank you. So isn't that cute? I think it's adorable. So then we would have the H with the honey pot, the M or the E. And I know Maya's just gonna love switching this around each day. Next, I'm going to put this one on. It's the little honey scooper. It's from the same series, the um, Home is Where Your Honey Is. I think it will fit in there, just like so. Now the only thing is, is that the honey is pooling down at the bottom of the honey dipper, so I'm gonna have to switch that up just a little bit. Now on the other ends of your blocks where you've got your wood grain, it might be a little more difficult just to get it stuck down there because there is those, you know, the knots kind of lines but I think it's still gonna work. So for this one, I'm gonna do the little part that's covered with honey in yellow. It's 
sorry, just concentrating. And I want to leave where it shows the honey pooling. I'm just going to leave that spot out for now. I'm going to grab some iced coffee. Now this one's going to need a stir. See how it kind of separates and it looks kind of mucky? It's perfectly natural. It's just the pigments like to separate. It does that with all paints. So you just give it a stir. We have these amazing little stir sticks that fit perfectly in there too. So that's handy. You don't want to use a wooden stir stick when you're using chalk or I was going to say chalk synthesis, but um, chalk, uh, chalkology, chalkology paste, tongue tied tonight, um, because it actually wicks the water away from it. So your paste will dry out and thicken too fast. Now, if it is drying out, you can add water. We recommend to use distilled because sometimes well water, depending on the minerals and stuff that's in it, it can cause some mold to grow, so you don't want that. So always use your dist um, distilled water or um, bottled water even. Okay, so there I've done the handle. Oh, it looks cute. Isn't that adorable? Now, I'm not totally done with this one. I'm gonna set that over there. I'm just gonna grab my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, a hair blower will work. This happens to be the Pro Heater, and it works amazing for drying it quickly. But like I said, if you don't have one of those, a hair blower will work just dandy. All right, sorry, got a little sidetracked there. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna lay this down a little differently because I still want that pooling of honey. Just I wanted it on the bottom instead of because I've turned the transfer, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna add a little more of the yellow to where the pooling of the honey was. So this just shows you that you can you can move the transfer around and angle it differently to get the desired look that you're going for. So instead of having the honey would have been up on this edge because it was supposed to be standing straight up and down, I've turned it and I just made the honey pool at the bottom. Isn't that cute? So now we have home that's got the honeycomb or we have home that's the honey pot or we have, ooh, I stuck my finger in there and it didn't even smudge. Or we have home that's the ladle. I'm wondering, oh, oh, I just had a brain idea, a brain idea, a brain thought, whatever the word would be. It's late at night, I'm tired. But I was looking at that honey and I was thinking, geez, that could use the word if I had one small enough, and I do. This is on the bottom of the Sweeter Than Honey transfer. So it comes with a little beehive and some bees, and it comes with this, and it comes with the Honey Bee Farms. So it would be so cute to have the word honey on that pot. So we can layer it. So I'm just gonna lie it right on there now that it's dry. Just trying to put it on there straight. I should have fuzzed this one because I'm putting it on top of a layer of chalk paste, but I didn't. I am going for a rustic look, so if it peels up a little bit, I'll be okay with that. But ideally, if you're layering, you want to fuzz. And I'll show you what fuzzing is in just a couple minutes. Really simple, it's nothing very technical at all. Just applying a little bit of the black, scraping back the excess, peeling it up, and it came out perfectly. Again, sticking it off to the side because I'm just going to wash that down with cold water after. But doesn't that add to it? Isn't that adorable? I'm just going to see if I have any comments coming up. Nope, apparently I do not have comments. You people are quiet tonight. Let me check and make sure there's nothing coming up on here. 
find it strange not to have comments. Maybe everybody's tired tonight. 12 comments. All right, yours goes green every time. Let's save, here we go. The E is backwards, they're all backwards, honey. Because, watch, when I make it turn around properly, it goes green on me. Wait a second, you're right. Oh, I hate it when my daughter's right. Oh my Lord. Love you, Brittany. Thank you. All right, move on. She's gonna love to hear the I told you so's. Just know it. Gosh, you love that, don't you? Okay, moving on now. So we've got the Honey Dipper, the Honeycomb, the really cute Honey Pot now. We're all dry. I am going to go with, let's see, next I'm going to add this guy, isn't he cute? So this one came again in the Honey Bee Farms that says, um, sorry, Sweeter Than Honey, the Sweeter Than Honey transfer. So we're going to have three different transfers on the go here tonight, just to show you how interchangeable they all are. So. I'm gonna go this way on the block. Not that it really matters. Actually, I'm gonna stick it a little over to the side. There is so much detail in this transfer that you would not get from a stencil. I'm just telling you. It is so cute. And for being so tiny, it's amazing you can get this much detail in it. They have done an amazing job on these. I'm just gonna scrape that back. I'm gonna set that over to the side. Peel and reveal the cutest little honey house. It's adorable. Now, I have a tiny little paintbrush because there is one detail that I wish it had and that's the little black hole for the bees to go in. So I just take the tiniest paintbrush and I dip it into the black paint and I'm just gonna put that little circle on there. hands a little shaky tonight there we go I just think that adds to it next I'm gonna go in with from that same transfer section where did I set them oh mercy oh I dropped them on the floor so from that same transfer, it also came with these two cute little bees. I'm going to use those and oh, there's another transfer that has the little dots that goes around and it is part of, I don't see it up here, I must have forgot to grab that little section. It is part of the Bees Knees collection of, of Home is Where the Honey Is. I'm just going to grab it. I really want it. Just give me one quick sec, guys. I'm not sure where it got put. I thought I grabbed it. I do apologize, guys. I was doing so well here for being organized. Okay, well, I've misplaced it. I will probably find it after, but I can freehand it. It's not that big of a deal. So I want to stick this little bee sticking out this way. Now, I didn't dry that yet, so I'm going to make sure I don't stick it down to the wet paste. So I'm just going to keep that held up. I'm going to grab some black paste. I'm just 
just gonna squeegee it on and peel back any of the excess, just squeegeeing it off. Look at him. Isn't he cute? And look at the detail in that honeycomb. Or beehive, I mean. Honeycomb. Come on, girl. It is so cute. And then I'm gonna take this little fella. He is so cute too. I'm gonna peel him off. And I'm just gonna stick him flying up this way. No, maybe, maybe flying this way. I look cute right there. And again, I'm just applying the paste and kind of squeegeeing it off as I go. Still using that same amount, haven't re-dipped. And there we go. Isn't it sweet? Love it. This is so cute. Now I'm going to go in with my super fine brush and I'm just going to make my little lines. just because I don't know where I set that transfer. So I'll freehand it. Just about done. Isn't it cute? I love it, love it, love it. That might be my favorite side. That one, or the honey. Oh, I don't know. They're all so cute. So cute. All right. Then I'm going to move to one more side. This one's gonna be pretty cute too. I am gonna take this transfer, and I'm going to apply it. So it's just like a cool little wreath thing. And I'm gonna position that on there. Again, lightly pressing it down just to make sure. It might overhang just a touch, but I think that's gonna look cute anyways. I'm gonna take my yellow, and I'm just gonna apply yellow. I know it's supposed to be like a reef, but to me, it kind of looks like honey splatters. I'm just saying it does to me. Just going around the edges. Because there's no point in wasting it on the whole transfer. And scraping back any of the excess just a little spot there and I'm gonna put that back in the jar while I'm gonna set it in the lid for now oh so cute so we have an O in what I think is like honey splatters but I'm gonna dry that quickly Oh, it smells so good because I use that, um, what was it, the Noir Moon Salve. Because it's heating up when I'm drying this. It smells so yummy. I actually have bought the, um, the little melters that you put in, you know, like Sensei makes, is it called Sensei? You know those little wax pucks that you melt and they smell so good? Well, Wise Owl came out with those too. I have them in Noir Moon. It's just, oh, it's like, I don't know, baked goods baking or something. I don't know. It's just yummy. My all-time favorite. Actually, I'm not going to cut this one. I've already cut them off and have them on a backer. So I'm just going to peel this guy. Look at him. Isn't he adorable? Look at the detail in his wings. You can't get that from any other transfers. There is no way, no how. I'm gonna 
try and get as much of his wings in there as possible. Doesn't fit perfectly, but pretty darn close. And I'm just making sure there's no air bubbles or lint or anything that's underneath the silk screen area. Then I'm gonna go in with the black. I'm gonna actually give it a little stir here because it's starting to thicken up because I've been taking so long. And like I said, it is the bottom of the jar, so it doesn't take long for that to dry when there's only a little thin coat of them in the bottom of the jar, right? I'm just gonna quickly apply the black paste all over my bumblebee or honeybee, as the case may be. Ha, case may be. Too funny. Too funny for this time of night. This would be adorable in one of those tear trays. I think it would be awesome. Just squeegeeing back any of the excess just so there's no harsh lines or lumps or waste of product. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Look at that. So he's kind of like splatters of honey around and the amazing bee. What do we think? Isn't that cute? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Is there any other one that I could stick in there? I could stick words like, I do have another side here. I could stick like sweet, something like that, but I kind of like it to resemblance you know, of a pitcher instead, so that it's it matches with the O. But we got all kinds of cool things. Little bumblebees on there might even look cute if you're not into too much yellow. Love that one. Love that one. Love that one. Oh, I love them all. I couldn't choose which one's my favorite, actually. So there we go. I've got all the sides except for one done. And maybe I'll leave that one blank because I just can't think of which one I want to stick on there right at the moment. Not sure. So I might leave that one and see if Maya can come up with an idea. It'll be fun for her to do. That's the great thing with this too, is it's so easy to do that even the kids can do it. But that's it for tonight. I hope you guys liked this project. I hope it inspired you guys to be creative and use, you know, just old chunks of wood that we had from renovations and lightly painted them with the wise owl paint wet sanded them with some salve or some wax whatever you have um, but the salve does smell amazing just gotta say um, and then I chalked on them and they are so cute like look at the details in those wings and in his body you can't get that in a regular stencil that is just awesome so this is Chalk Couture, loving it so far. Well, I love it all the time. I just love, love, love this stuff. Um, I'm going to come back tomorrow and we're going to do more bee theme stuff. Some of it will be Chalk Couture and some of it will just be crafting bee stuff. Um, I have a whole line of, of stuff that I want to do. So anyways, I'm going to say goodnight and I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are inspired to make something beautiful. And uh, if you're interested in any of the products that I use tonight, whether it be Wise Owl or Palm Brushes or Chalk Couture, I don't know. If there's the heat gun, I don't know. If there's any of the stuff that you want to know about, just comment in the comments below. I will message you back on either where you can get the products or what the brand was or answer any of your questions. I'm here to help. We're going to call it a wrap. I hope you've had a great night. Love you and thank you for stopping by. Love this. It's so cute. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>